the sponsor of and happy to do so. I think it's wonderful that the, uh, these young men continue on with the, the good work of staff. So, uh, Jeff, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jose. Good morning, everyone. Can I literally hear me? No. Yeah. No. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, I don't know if you know me for this. It's over. My name is Jeff Garlick. Um, I'm that small, shy, quiet guy who likes to hang out in the corner and avoid the spotlight. Uh, so if you have any trouble hearing me or understanding me, just jump up and shout. I want to thank you very much for having me this morning, and I'm here in my green uniform representing Venture and Crew 1204, which is a sailing unit in the Wisconsin of America that this Rotary Club charters. What does that mean? I don't know uh, everyone here has been with us for the past several years, since in 2013, we chartered Venture and Crew 1204, so a real quick overview. I'm sure all of us are familiar with the Boy Scouts of America, the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, and the different things that they do in general. But there's a couple of components about scouting that some people aren't familiar with. <coughs> every Boy Scout troop, every Cub Scout pack, and every venturing crew is chartered by a community organization or, or a religious organization. And there is a partnership between that individual unit and alignment with the goals and mission and beliefs and values of the organization that charters it. So when you see a Cub Scout pack, a Boy Scout troop, that meets at a community church, ideally when the program is run optimally, the, the general values and, and direction of that program are going to be influenced, or at least set by the values of that charter organization. Sometimes the organization is gonna be in a public or neutral space, like a, like a school system um, or a community center, and that's fine too. I feel very blessed that three years ago, when several scouts that I know came to me and wanted to start a venturing crew within scouting, and I came to the Lake Huffington Park Rotary Club, you very cheerfully and very generously agreed to be our chartering organization, and we've had a relationship since that time. Venturing is probably one of the Boy Scouts' best kept secrets. It's very difficult in a short, concise tagline to summarize what the venturing program is, how it's similar and how it's different from Boy Scouting. So the best way that I can describe what venturing is to this group is by explaining the updated new program, which has this awesome tagline called ALPS. We really stand for four things in our program, and it's adventure, leadership, personal growth, and service. So, Here's what you have in adventure. In a typical Boy Scouting campout, when you wear the pan shirts and you see the boys running around and climbing the mountains, you follow something called the Advancement Program. And that is that every scout probably has this dream to one day become an Eagle Scout. And you get to your Eagle Scout award by going to troop meetings and learning how to tie knots and learning how to not kill people with knives and then pretending that you didn't learn that, depending on who's watching. And then continuing on, learning how to build fires, and maybe do some community service, and getting some leadership experience, and then teaching people how to tie knots, and teaching people how to not kill people with knives. And it goes on for about five or six years in an institutionalized, very, very mechanical <laughs> process as you hit rank requirements and rank requirements through activities. And eventually, if you take on the responsibility of your service project, you may reach Eagle Scout. Within this structure, your troop will probably go on a camp out once a month. But the focus of that camp out, while having the outdoor program and the, the general ability to develop with your peers, is there and very important. It's also going to have a focus on hitting some of those skills in the, in the advancement program. Venturing is a little bit different. Venturing is a much more youth led and youth owned program. It's a program that gives youth, boys and girls, between the ages of 14 to 20, the opportunity to take the responsibilities to customize a program that they find interesting, challenging, and providing an adventure that gives them rewards in community service, in leadership, and future opportunity. Many venturing crews, like Crew 1204, go on campouts routinely and do outdoor activities, and I'll ask Steve and Kevin to talk about some of those in just a moment. But the wonderful thing about venturing is that all of the aspects of the programs and activities that we do, our service projects, our monthly camp out for activities, what happens at a meeting, they're the responsibility of the youth in the program. See what I mean. Two years ago, 
Matthew Babbage and Patrick Astorita came, and you had a really awesome snake handler guy, and it was really, really cool. And they were telling you about their exciting trip they had just taken to Killington Mountain in Vermont. That was a trip that was pretty much mostly planned by Matt. He had never planned a big weekend adventure before. And in Boy Scouts, when the youth want to say, hey, we want to go on a ski trip, well, what usually happens is they sit around the conference table, a couple of the older scouts and some of the adults in the room, and they say, yeah, we want to go, we want to go to this place, a ski trip on this date. And then the adult committee takes that information figures out if it's feasible, designs a budget, figures out what the timetable that's going to be, figures out what the actual program details are, and then gives it back to the youth and says, all right, so the trip's gonna cost 40 bucks, we can leave them, <coughs> give me a schedule of what you wanna happen and then you can run with it. Definitely a lot of room for youth leadership there. In venturing, they say, well, we wanna have this ski trip. I say, fantastic, and who's gonna be that activity chair? One of the youth steps up, Matt, you know what, I'll own it, I'll do it, great. Well, now I say, okay, Matt, so you want to do a ski trip up to Killington, Vermont in three months. Where are we staying? <coughs> How much is it going to cost to get there? What, what's it going to cost for people who snowboard? What's it going to cost for people who ski? What's the food going to cost? How much do people have to bring? Oh, I have to plan a budget. Okay, have you ever planned a budget before? No. Okay, great. Open Google Drive. I'm going to teach you how to use a spreadsheet. And you go through the motions, and you have the step-by-step -step experience to learn the planning components to setting up a trip such as that. So we had that very successful trip two years ago, and we had one again last year, when Patrick Astorita, our president last year, was here to talk to you about killing Tanam about Arcadia National Park trip. Taking it a level further, this past year, this past February, we had a ski trip again, except I issued a challenge to the crew now that we had developed over a year or two, and we had some high points and we had some low points. And one thing that kind of disappointed me because I had this talented bunch of juniors and seniors in high school last year. We, uh, we really hadn't been doing much to defer the cost of that particular ski trip. I didn't see in the prospect of a $250 base trip weekend just so I can sit in a ski lodge and eat overpriced crappy burgers for two hours while a bunch of other people ski kind of bothered me. So at a crew meeting in October, shortly after when Patrick made his presentation about our Acadia trip, I said to the crew, hey, I know you guys really want to go on your Vermont ski trip again. Um, my challenge to you is that it has to cost $60 per person. <coughs> and they were like, what, what, what? I said, by all means, we'll do the trip and I'll support you on it. But you've been around long enough, you have to design a fundraiser and get that base cost down from the $200 down to 60 because that, that's a part of this program. Uh, a blue was put in place, we didn't entirely meet our goal. We came up with the idea of selling these uh, emergency kits for $4 each, and we're probably able to knock about $400, $500 off the, the base price and get it down to a $75 base price per person. This is an initiative that is taken on completely by the youth, and that, uh, that experience and that opportunity to have responsibility for that planning is really what the crux of venturing is. There are many programs that do allow youth to go out and do trips. You can join a ski club, ski club in your school. Uh, you can pretty much find a group of friends in the Bergen County area uh, and just hitch a ride up to Mountain Creek. So, so that's really not what the appeal is. Um, but it's that opportunity to have the personal growth <coughs> and leadership development and skills. That's really, really huge. Another major component of the venturing program in the Alps model is our service. And that's something that our crew has tried to, to really live up to, although I'd like to see us do a little more. I'm really excited that last year we added to our program two activities uh, in February. Everyone in our crew got certified as a citizen responder for advanced first aid CPR and AED by a, a, a local um, American Red Cross certifier that we know. That was a really exciting moment and hits on some of the uh, requirements for one of the new awards. And our crew also participated actively in our Council Scouting for Food program, a partnership we do with the Center for Food Action once a year, where we ask all of the scouts and troops from around the area to donate canned goods and other food, and then we have a big, huge sorting day, and I think my dad uh, was there as well. Um, we have a giant gymnasium, and it's about an eight-hour project to sort all this food loaded into boxes, and venture food level four is actually the most relevant kind of unit there. Um, I'd love to follow up about some of our challenges and what I'd like to talk with you about, but we have, uh, we're really, really blessed to have Kevin
Kevin and David with us who are currently in tech for, uh, for IT. And I want to give them a chance to each talk a little bit about some experiences they've had recently. Uh, can you guys come up for a minute? Sure, David. Me first? Yes. I don't know um, if, how many people even uh, know me. I'm uh, David. I uh, think it was two years ago I came here and uh, spoke to you guys. But I am uh, one of the founding members of our crew. I was there since the beginning, ever since we were meeting in the, uh, the Brooklyn Diner every, uh, every few weeks. But uh, the crew has come a long way. Uh, as Jeff said, uh, last year we had a lot of seniors in high school. So uh, we, over this past year, we've lost um, a lot of people, but uh, recently we just got a whole new influx of uh, new venturers, and we just uh, two weeks ago took our uh, first big trip as our new crew uh, to uh, Terrell and <coughs> stayed in the cabin, and it was uh, really great. Surprisingly, um, with all this new, all these new people, we uh, worked really well together. And uh, that moment when you're sitting at the end of the day, everyone's exhausted from working. And, uh, but everyone still has smiles on their faces, and that's one of the most uh, personally fulfilling moments I have in scouting, is that even after all, everyone works so hard all day, and uh, we have so much to do, uh, everyone's still having a great time at the end. And that's the, one of the reasons why I love being in uh, Crew 1204, is that I, it's something that personally I'm very attached to, and you know I don't know why I would have stayed in it if after two years of college and all the ups and downs that it's had, but it's really amazing. And that, I, I don't know, I hope uh, next year I can come back and yeah. talk to you guys again after all the amazing things that we were gonna do in, in the upcoming year. Uh, in about uh, three months, we possibly can go to uh, the West Point Campery. Uh, it's very exclusive, so they still have to pick who's going and who's not, but we have a, a inside man on that, so uh, crossing our fingers. And then um, we possibly will be going to Acadia again this year. Uh, we went um, two years ago, and it's a really fun trip. We stay there for a week, uh, we go to Blackwoods, we hike around the mountains, um, but also we've been throwing around going down to uh, West Virginia to the New River and whitewater rafting there. Uh, they have like class four, class five rapids, and it's super, super amazing and beautiful. So um, yeah, we have a lot of uh, really amazing things coming up in the next year, so uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, most of you probably don't know me. Hi, Hi Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. <laughs> um, I've been in the crew for about a year now, but only more recently started becoming more active. So I'm looking forward to the trip in the future that David mentioned, and possibly doing one of the week-long trips like you mentioned to Acadia. And um, really enjoyed our last trip to uh, But uh, Kevin and Jonathan are on the way. Kevin and David are on the way out of school. Does anyone have any questions they want to address as one of the youth of the crew before I finish up my presentation? I, I had a question. So, um, is there like kind of a national meeting or regional meeting for venturing? Uh, you guys factor in or do any kind of every year? Uh, um, for regional stuff, um, there are. Are there like uh, there are talk venturing about, officers? Talk, 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 talk about talk about an apex. Yeah, that, that's that's right. So um, that same weekend I was talking about the West Point Campery. Um, there is an Area Two apex. Area Two is the uh, Connecticut, Vermont, Northern New York region of venturing. And for the past two years, we've gone to their apex, which is their district Campery, where all of their uh, all of their crews and 
surround area that want to experience what they do go and it's all a bunch of fun they have a bunch of programs set up and uh, we've gone there the past two years if we can't go to West Point we're going to go there and then I think a month after that our district is having their apex and uh, we're talking about going to that too so <coughs> there's going to be all the crews from the area going to these uh, these apexes and we're going to just go there we can talk see what other crews are up to get ideas about uh, all the things uh, that they're doing see what if we can uh, maybe take some inspiration from them. Mm -hmm. I know the past few, past two, uh, we t we spend a lot of time with all the youth, seeing what they do, and the adults spend a lot of time with the other adults and see how they run their crew and what their crews are up to. So those are really great um, sounding boards to get new ideas and uh, new inspiration for uh, our events and a lot of things like that. <coughs> Guys, thank you so much for being out this morning. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. So we've had uh, we've had one great activities. Um, now now some technical updates that are really important to me that I want to share with you as well for the organization. Last, uh, like like any organization, it's important to focus on your membership, your retention, your recruitment, things like that. It's really really tricky we found to do recruiting for venturing, or at least it was in the last two years, because we're drawing from a very, very interesting geographical area. We've got members from Bergen, Passaic, uh, and Essex counties. Um, so a coordinated recruiting effort has kind of been a bit of a challenge. And what we were facing last year is the group of venturers that had formed the group three years ago was preparing to graduate. And with that and the prospects of college, there was also a little bit of a downturn in enthusiasm as well. Um, but I'm really, really, really thrilled to share that Patrick, whom you met last year when he gave the presentation, um, actually took on the personal responsibility uh, of making sure that the crew didn't die, because we were looking at losing about 85% of our membership. Uh, and he worked very, very hard to convince his peers that, hey, we need to actively do some outreach uh, he was actually recognized at the council level with a, a high level award called the Venturing Leadership Award um, for, for all of this time and effort that he had put in. And as a result of some efforts, we managed to get about five new people on board from just reaching out and pulling people in. Um, I just yesterday did our annual recharter. Uh, just like Rotary, you have to file with District 7490 every year and say how many people are just no longer Rotarian, how many people you have. I have to do that every year too for the council. And on the report, I dropped 15 youth members that were on our roster from last year, majority of whom either kind of checked in, joined, and then kind of didn't stick around, I think we've all been there, um, and also who went away to college. Now, they're doing some great things. Matt Babbage is currently attending West Point uh, with honors. Patrick Astorita is pursuing his dream of getting a commercial ski scholarship. He was on a ski, cadet, so ski sabbatical in Colorado. Um, everyone uh, went out and got into a really great college. But if there was any connection that we could have with Rotary and the community resource to propose a, have a recruiting platform either within the Wyckoff school system or within the local churches and communities, that would be a really helpful step to the crew continuing its success because currently I don't have a direct tap into the Wyckoff or Midland Park environment. The members of the crew actually are not from Wyckoff or Midland Park. So something to consider as a resource that would be very helpful from the Rotary Club if there was a community connection that we could kind of get a tap somewhere into the community. community. And the age range target is anywhere from eighth grade or 14, co-ed up until 20. So, so that would be fantastic. We did bring on an additional eight youth, which is really exciting, and we've got some great things we're looking forward to this year. We want to do a bigger emphasis on service, and one thing that, even before this meeting, I was talking to my dad about doing, um, the crew came up with the idea of wanting to work at a soup kitchen, and we had tentatively discussed doing it for this Sunday, but the planning didn't come ahead. Uh, I would be delighted in order to do more community service with the Lycoff Rotary Club, and specifically if there were a way to arrange a program for the youth from the crew to participate at the Oasis shelter, that would be fantastic. I've had that experience myself. 
and I would really like to see the service component of what we do as a crew come closer to Rotary. I'm really happy that we had the triathlon last year, more venturers attend than we've had in the past in the state of the beast group. So I realize that I'm pushing late on time, and I just want to express that I'm very grateful for your continued support um, in, in chartering us and from your continued financial support uh, and just your general resource. And I would very actively like to have a, a closer alignment in our programs where appropriate going in the future. So thank you very much for, uh, for your support of um, scouting and venture fish before.